I unmuted. I just wanted to do kind of more, more of a discussion. And unmuted. Our last discussion lasted like three hours. I did. So, Why did you mute it? Um, hmm? Why is it muted? You were, I don't know. Again. Um, and today's focus is going to be um, on the different types of anarchy. individual in society. Um, social anarchism is talking about um, like uh, mostly like the responsibility to a collective or like your community essentially versus like individual anarchy is very much like like the freedom of the individual is like paramount you know um, and so that's like generally like the, the main differences and you can go into um, like egoism and naturism and individual anarchy um, also there's like eco anarchism and then primitivism also in that um, but, I mean, the main difference would be uh, essentially the individual's role in society and at one point the society, you know, um, like the responsibility the individual has to the society. Um, so that's the broad sort of differences, I guess. Questions? Yes. How does that individual difference break out in particular? Um, um, Okay, <clears throat> if, if, all, if what we're looking at is individual anarchism and there are all these shades within the individual category, what distinguishes uh, each from the other? Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't know too much about the different flavors of individualist uh, anarchism. Um, but the, the focus would be, uh, in contrast to social anarchism, the individualist anarchist uh, is going to be much more for, um, you know, the, the individual is paramount, and um, rather than, like, the community is paramount. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah, we can, yeah, we're, we're trying to focus more on um, social anarchism at this time. But, yeah, I believe um, that, like, you know, there's, um, like we should have like a social responsibility that you know it's not necessarily like while you know you should have like there's certain aspects of individual anarchism I do appreciate like as I do believe like in um, in you know in individual in, in individual freedom I think that's like free will is, is really important um, but I think that at the end of the day though the collective will should in most cases kind of supersede that individual will because we all live in a society we can't really survive without each other um, which is why I try to you know I tend to want to focus more on social anarchy. Um, having said that, though, I also believe that um, you know um, there's like there's you know there's all these there are all these differences between the different types of anarchy. But I think at the end of the day, like we should really be focusing more like an, an anarchy with no adjectives um, because I think anarchy can be really it's, it's really flexible and it's really whatever like you and your community decide and um, it should be. So. Um, you know, I think one of one of the I think the one of the differences within social anarchy, and I don't know if it's true for individual anarchy as well, is like just basically like how um, like how for example you would actually like facilitate an anarchist anarchy society, like what sort of um, what sort of economy you would have, because there's different types of economies, there's the gift economy, there's a the barter economy, um, and I think um, you know there's um, and whether like you know the focus would be on like um, I know that there's um, you know, anarcho communism focuses on um, a lot on the, uh, the uh, ownership of the means of production by uh, by whoever's using it, um, and so there's lots of a focus on actually owning things because you can uh, versus like I think it's anarcho socialism that focuses more on like there's still like you know there's still an ownership of the means of production, but it's just ownership by oh, by yeah. the workers. Well, yeah, that's that's more of like uh, collectivism. Collectivism is like 
Um, so, okay, so let me step back a little bit. Um, anarchism has developed um, very in parallel with the developments of capitalism. And so you don't really see, like, uh, anarchism, you know, uh, coming up to the surface so much until you see um, this sort of capitalistic influence in, um, mostly in Europe and then around the world, right? And so um, in uh, anarcho-collectivism, it was a time in which there were still skilled artisans, but it was like very early, like, factory formation, right? And so anarcho-collectivism is basically saying um, that um, the the workers should own their own tools and when they say workers they mean like the skilled artisans should own their own tools and whatever you put in you should be getting out um, in proportion right and so the the famous tagline would be from each according to ability to each according to work done and that's different from anarcho-communism which is saying which you know collectivism sort of you know morphed into anarcho-communism when things got very much industrialized um, and anarcho-communism is saying um, not necessarily what you're, how, how much you contribute, but based on your need, right? And so that's guided by this principle of mutual aid, which is like a responsibility to your community, right? And so um, in, in the anarcho sort of communist society, you have from each according to ability to each according to need. So you put in what you are able to put in and you take what you need, rather than in a collectivist society where you put in what you are able to and then you get a, a specific portion you know, um, proportional to the amount of work that you've done. Um, so that's sort of a, a shift. Uh, and collectivism was around um, in like the early 18 to mid um, 1800s, and then communism sort of developed after that in uh, the late 1800s with um, Kropotkin. Uh, and, Do you know yeah, about like the split between Marx and Kropotkin? Yeah. 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 Um, were there any questions first? Um, how would this relate to primitive hunting and gathering societies, which, from what I've studied, lived in a, when I say primitive hunting and gathering societies, I'm talking about the way people lived, say, 40,000 years ago, which um, I, uh, from what I've studied, very much lived in a situation of where they contributed according to their ability and received according to their need. And, how does, and, and so I guess what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying, or I'm not sure if this is a statement or a question, but it seems to me that a form of anarchism, communism, however, there's, there's another thing you have to agree on, which is worse than you can think anyway. Um, but it seems to be a form of that stuff existed for most of our human species' existence. It wasn't until we started to have property and stuff, we domesticated plants and animals that we got messed up, it seems to be. Um, you had a response? Uh, yeah, I, I think um, besides Proudhon and some of the people who tried to came up with the ideas after 1980s, uh, like uh, that book by the Brazilian author, the book by the Brazilian author whose name I forgot, uh, Radical Democracy. Uh, they tried to come up with uh, some kind of post-anarchist, post-Marxist point of views to go back to that area or recreate that. But I think most uh, uh, thinkers of the anarchist idea uh, are not in favor of going back except for Proudhon, and they want to go forward and they want to transform the machinery of the capitalist system into an anarchist society. Yeah, I'm not suggesting that we give them a publishing. One thing I am going to make yeah. a mention of, though... I said the machinery of the capitalism. <laughs>
Yeah. Really so good. We can, we can yeah. We still can kill Anakin. Yeah, I mean, the fun is going to keep going this way. anti-statist, like eventually the state will wither away, right? That's what, what he was talking about. Bakunin and the anarchists were saying, no, that's a lot of, that's a little horse shit. The state isn't going to go anywhere. Um, the state is in, inherently develops its own interests, 
right? and he's very famous for saying you can take the hardest the most hardened revolutionary you can find, put him in charge or put him in in the state apparatus and he'll become the worst perpetrator of oppression, right? throughout history, right? so this is bakunin saying this like before you know the russian revolution, before like any of this stuff and so there was this split that happens um between the anarchists who didn't want to use the state, who wanted to immediately transition into the stateless anti-capitalist society and the Marxists, right, who eventually became the communists, right, and the communists are, are um, very much in favor of forming political a political party, a very strong communist party that is um, created uh, by the workers themselves so that you can have a dictatorship of the proletariat or in other words, um, the ruling, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the working class um, controls the levers of the state, right, versus um, the anarchist perspective, which is like, no, let's not do that. We can do it now, um, and so that's sort of the origin of this of this split on the left, right? And then, um, and then you had you know an emergence of like you know state socialism and things like that as well. And so that's like sort of the basic differences between um, the communists, right, and the anarchists. So I don't mean to interrupt, but um, if we could discuss, discuss that just a little bit before we okay. go on, I don't. Know. Out of process here. I know yeah, process sure. <laughs> If I'm out of process, you know how to. How to um, the, the Marxists that I've talked to would re, would agree with, with a lot of what you were saying. Would rephrase it slightly. Okay. Would say that Marx and how do you pronounce the other gentleman's name? Bakunin. Am I pronouncing the right? Bakunin. Yes. Yeah. Marx and Bakunin, in fact, both wanted to smash the capitalist state. Bakunin wanted to go ahead and right into a stateless society and, and and saying that if we if we create anything Marx wanted to replace smash the capitalist state replace it with a worker state that would protect the revolution from the capitalists coming back Bakunin would say if you do that then this new state you've just created is going to become corrupt and it's going to we're just going to smash it Marx would say if you don't put something powerful there the capitalists are going to take over again. Marx would say that to keep that new powerful state from becoming our new enemy, that you need to go ahead and rotate the position so that so that the people that are in management roles are seen as servants of the people below them, never make any, never get any more stuff from the people below them, and are continually rotated. So you never develop any kind of, of hierarchy. <laughs> That is going to go ahead and, and take over. So it, 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 and, and from my point of view, it, it seems to me that both methods have have, have dangers. Both methods are minefields, but there are much less minefields if we know where the mines are. And, and yeah, this the anarchist way of doing it would seem to me to be vulnerable to the capitalists coming back in and taking over. The, the Marxist way of doing it seems to me to be vulnerable to its internal structure. side there's a section on the international you can read collected works by Bakunin you can read the debates between Marx and Bakunin as well um, the anarchistlibrary.org is also a good place you have a um, there's a book called Demanding the Impossible uh, History of the History of Anarchism by John Marshall that's a pretty good book it's it, 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 it's, it approaches it from a historical perspective yeah. so how these theories and ideas have been applied so I, I, I think that's a pretty good book to start from it's called Demanding the Impossible. Demanding the Impossible. It's kind of academic. There's a debate about whether or not the state creates class or class creates the state. Marx argued that it was the class creation that led to the formation of the state. Macron thought that it was hierarchy, the general legislation of class. You can find it on PM Press. It's splitting in 73, I think. Which, by the way, I wanted to point out too, we should be clear about The anarchists were expelled from the international by a vote that was conducted by the Marxists. It wasn't simply like an amicable disagreement. It was a force of the And uh, uh, another bit of reason is Lenin's uh, State of the Revolution is, uh, covers some of this. And it also might be interesting to discuss it, maybe not today, but discuss at some point the uh, Paris Commune. The 
first commune which failed both marx and bakunin thought it failed for completely different completely opposite reasons and it's interesting to look back and see what how all that comes together i wonder if we could put this within a pragmatic frame for those of you who've been involved in in these kinds of research and thinking these ideas through how are they helping us as occupy la imagine where we're going at least where are we going and how i see it i mean i think it's providing a different model for living primarily at least for me and my perspective like i think my goal as uh an anarchist is to inspire other individuals to network and create those spaces uh parallel to the institution that those, those structures that don't exist that, that that don't provide the the means and needs to our advancement to, to gaining more freedom so for example like collectivizing uh co-opting like living in in, in, in co-ops working in co-ops and creating like a, 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 a an alternative uh, educational institution like you know i think anarchism provides the, the models um you have to like i mean this is on based on individual you, you know you, i think you have to uh figure out yourself like where you see yourself fit because there's different branches of anarchism but at least for me uh, anarcho-communism is the most the, the trend I, I i relate to i de identify the most and where i find my kind of like inspiration in my practice so uh, um my question is um how do uh, anarchism, if it takes over society, how to ensure the safety and whatever democratic rights uh, comes or for the different groups that we have, given that we've been under the current system for such a long time and uh, yet we want to replace it, but uh, how do you ensure that those that will oppress the most are going to, you know, uh, be helped by uh, whatever society we form and the safety of those groups. Uh, how do anarchism ensure that safety? So um, I kind of um, I wanted to address actually your question first, but I kind of want to get to that too. Because um, I think um, I think that before, at least for learning what anarchy was. Until Paul like Occupy started, and I actually like met other anarchists who like told me, and I like researched it, and I was like, oh wow, I really like believe in a lot of these ideas and values, and I think that's really important is to to have an understanding of like of what like another world would actually look like, because I think a lot of times we're stuck in this like oh capitalism and people like don't see another way, um, and I think and I think uh, anarchy is actually something that's very organic and very natural, which is why like you know like it didn't actually come from like a theory, like it wasn't like somebody like sat down with the system theory, you know, the people theorized about what was happening, but it came from like a lot of like working class people, like it came from people who struggled. Like people who were drawn to anarchy very organically because it makes sense. Because like, you know, if you ask anybody, like, you know, do you, do you believe that you should, you know, you should be able to have a say in your community, most people would be like, well yeah, you know. I mean I think people are very, very open to that. So I think anarchy is something that's very much organic to how people in general uh, in general live. Um, and I, so I think, like, also, like, capitalism hasn't been, I mean, has been around for, what, like, 200, 300, I don't know, hasn't been that long in terms of, like, the larger, like, how long humans have existed, and before capitalism came around, like, people did live by anarchy, you know, a lot of anarchy values, um, and I think that, um, it is, the how part is a very difficult, like, part of how to get, you know, how do we get from, like, this very oppressive culture to one that, you know, that's not going to be oppressive, and how do we make sure the oppressor doesn't just come back and be oppressed? Um, you know, and I think that's a really, it's a really good question, and I think, you know, um, we need to make, you know, I think, I think even to, first of all, the capitalist class is really not that big, and even I think for some capitalists, anarchy would at the end of the day, you know, make more sense. I think anarchy, I think the power of anarchy is that it just, it just more, it makes more sense to a human being for how it should be arranged. So, um, but having said that, though, is, you know, I mean, um, but we need to protect our community from people that are oppressed. Like we need to figure out ways and to, you know, to protect our communities in a way that's not hierarchical and doesn't like we create oppression. I agree with the 
Carl was saying, I also want to it's add that I think process. something that's often not discussed when people ask that question is that the current system does not prevent minorities, right? I mean, we were at the anarchist, a lot of us were at the anarchist uh, collective conference yesterday where the black writer and gentleman quoted from Michelle Alexander's book that said that there are currently more, I've read, read, read most of her book, but that, that there are more black men in prison now than there were even slaves in 1860, right? So the fact is minorities are not protected by the current system, but that's not to naively suggest that we just smash the system and that it affords for natural universal equality either. I think what anarchism requires, as it did like in Spain about 80 years ago when they had a moment of anarchism in what they called Catalonia, was that, was that it required a commitment on the part of people to anarchistic ideas like Carl was talking about, which include direct democracy, universal equality, and mutual aid. If, if people don't agree with those things, anarchism won't be possible. But, but I think at the same time, it's similar to saying that if people don't believe in democracy, they don't believe that they have a right to certain you know, liberties, then that's not possible either. Uh, did you have something to say? I just wanted to make a point of process. I think if we uh, get the definitions out first and we define everything and of course indicate them, then uh, a lot of the questions would be naturally answered and more easily answered. So, what do you mean the actual definitions? Like, what are the like, we, we, like, like we Carol said, we were, like, yeah, like, we're like, going like, to like, define like, anarcho communism and difference between anarcho communism, anarcho syndicalism, and anarcho socialism. If you just get the definitions out and then uh, make uh, distinguish the differences, I think a lot of questions would be naturally answered. Um, in, two things. One, in, in regards to the